Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and today we've got a great training where we're going to be drilling down two levels of data here. So please stay tuned. It's going to be an amazing training. All right, let's get started. Uh, today what we have here is we're going to have the ability basically to drill down to specific data uh, in our workbook. So it's going to be really great. And a lot of times we have data, in this case we have customers, okay? We have invoices and we have payments, okay? But what I want to do is I want to see those invoices uh, with a drill down and I want to see the payments that make up those invoices uh, also and I want to do that all from the same screen uh, now why would we want to do that well there's a couple of good reasons one is it's very quick and it's very easy for the user to be able to see data with just a single click uh, number two is they don't have to go to additional sheets they can stay on the same sheet the same set of data and view multiple forms of data okay that's another reason another reason is uh, it's very fast and it's a very great way for users to be able to get the information they want extremely quickly all right so that's what we're doing and there's a great way that we've done it too so that it's extremely fast no matter how much data now let's go over how this is done okay well once again uh, like I said we have three sets of data here we have a customer table we have a set of invoices and we have a set of payments okay and the important thing each of these tables has a unique identifier unique qualifier unique number as you can see each customer has their own unique number okay so oh, excuse me when we have customer numbers here each customer has their own unique number okay so that's very important uh, no two customers can have the same number so you'll uh, if you're designing your table you want to make sure that the uh, user doesn't have ability to edit or change this or to duplicate uh, additional customer numbers in invoice numbers as you just saw each uh, invoice number is uh, also unique as well and that's what identifies uh, each specific invoice you do not want to have more than one invoice number and on payments all we do is we simply track uh, those customer numbers and then we track the invoices so we know which one to apply those invoices to so here's basically a list of payments okay and then uh, each one of those payments is tied to a specific invoice number so that's going to help us track and that's how we formed our data okay and now what we've done is the idea is when we expand uh, when we click on the plus here, it shows all the invoice numbers, the invoice dates, the amounts, and the total payments. Keep in mind that these values are not accurate, it's just test data, so I'm, they don't add up, okay? Don't worry about that, I'm just playing with it. But I'm sure in your tables they, were add up, they will add up properly, all right? And so the idea is when we click on, when we expand an invoice, I want to know the payments that make up that invoice, okay? So generally you will have uh, your payment amounts all match the total payments but it, we're just demonstrating the ability to expand okay so how do we do that okay well let's start out with some conditional formatting all right I've got multiple forms of conditional formatting here and that really helps us quickly color things we don't want to use Excel VBA to color if we can help it because that's a little bit slower conditional formatting is extremely fast and I've been able to do that with one hidden row and let's go ahead and unhide column O okay column O so we'll unhide that and as you see here I've got little notations little letters here that tell me what type of data is in this row C is for customer okay IH is for invoice header I is for invoice PH is payment header P is for payment and so on so because we're able to uniquely identify each row we can then uh, create conditional formatting based on those values so let's go ahead and look at it I'll just click on one cell here go to home conditional formatting let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the rules and we've got a set of rules we've got about six rules or so for each one we'll start at the beginning and this one this particular rule is for our main table okay it's for all these blue and whites down to for this to be accurate we we want to have two things actually uh, we want to be able to let's see this should be equal to C let me fix that real quick all right because I want you to be able to see what that is 
Okay, so what this is is uh, the ability says if it's a customer, C, and if it's an odd row, okay, this is odd rows. What this mod row uh, beginning and end parentheses two tells you every other row, every other row color it light blue. Okay, so that's what this is. All right, it it worked all also on M5, but but we want to make sure. And this M5, remember, it's very important that there's no dollar sign before the five. That means that it's going to be able to use for every row. Okay, if we put a dollar sign here, it's not going to work. Okay, and the, also the important thing is remember that five. Okay, our starting row also must be five. So when we have five in our starting row, that means it'll work for every single row. Okay, and uh, so that's what we get. That's what we get our main coloring for the main table. Okay, and next up, let's go with uh, invoice. Okay, we have an invoice header here. Okay, and this is a very simple rule. And all we're saying is that let's go ahead and move it over here. That if it's IH invoice header, I want to apply the following colors. Now let's go look at that conditional formatting. See what type of we have applied. Well, one. I've changed the border color, okay. Two, I've changed the font color, and I've changed the fill color. So we're going to apply those three different settings so they have a different color, okay. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the invoice, okay. Those are just for invoice items. And again, um, if M5, remember no dollar sign after, before the 5, that's critical, that covers, that's why we can use one rule that applies to the entire table. If it's invoice, uh, I want to color the uh, cells, what is that, like a light blue or turquoise, right? I'm going to put a, a border around it, which is the same color we're using, and uh, there's no change to the font, okay? So that helps us colors, and um, when we look at the when we look at the rule, it applies to. We're not applying this to the whole table. We're applying it to columns G, right? We're starting at G, okay? So you see G here, from to the end till L, okay? That's going to cover us for the whole table, okay? For the for the whole area that we want the invoice, just for the invoice section, not the whole table. Whereas in this particular rule, we did cover the whole table because that's for all the invoices. And basically the same idea for payments. We've gone ahead and, and you know any the header row that has pH, we've gone ahead and uh, changed that color. And also for the payment, the individual payments, we've gone ahead and given that a light, and we've covered only I, right? I through K, I through K, just these three, just these three columns here for payments. So that's how we're able to get the colors. All right, and now let's go ahead and VBA and get under the hood and see how this thing really works. All right, to get into the VBA editor, uh, if you have a developers tab open, you can go here to the Visual Basic. Uh, Alt F11 is the sort is your shortcut. If you do not have the developers tab, into File and uh, Options. Also uh, under the uh, Customize ribbon, you can see the developers here. So we'll want to check that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and Alt F11. That'll bring us into the Developers tab. And first up, we have uh, our customer sheet here. Okay, in this customer sheet, uh, we have uh, what we want to do is we want to create macros based on the selection change in this customer sheet. This is the only sheet that we have the macros running. And the important thing here is selection change, okay? Because what happens is when we select something, right? It's not when we change something, it's when we select something, we want some action, okay? So that's selection change, okay? And what is the range? Well, the range is this G column here, okay? G. And I've and I've put uh so if not intersect target range G5 through G100. Now this 100, you can you can make it 1000, you can make it 10,000. So you can change this depending upon your data uh, or you can use the entire column G2 if you want. I just kept it at 100 uh, for now. Um, so what we're saying is that if we make any kind of a change in this, then I want something to run. Okay, if we make any kind of selection. Now the reason we have if target, you're going to see this a lot in um, when I do programming because when, if without this, watch, let me show you what happens without it. Without this, okay, I'm going to comment that out. Now when we select, let me pull this up, when we select a large range, we're going to get a bug. Okay, it's just, and that's what happens when we do um, 
a target. When we do a selection change and we highlight a lot of rows, we're going to get a bug, okay? So, and it's going to say, hey, something. So what we're saying here is if the count, if the count is more than one, if you selected more than one cell, then just exit the sub. So that's why we have that there. So now with that in, right, and you select more than one row, and then you don't get a bug. So that's the reason we have that there. So it's very helpful. You'll want to use that. Also, um, in most of your code, when you do selection change or uh, value change, you'll want to have target count. Uh, but keep in mind that if you're selecting a merged cell, it might cause problems because merged cells often contain, you know, m more than one cell. So, so uh, if you're if you're using um, merged cells, you may not want to use this. Okay, so that's why I have that row. And basically, the next area is what I'm saying is if the target value equals this plus sign and m and the target row equals C, then show the invoices. So what that means is if it's a plus, right, if we're at a plus here, and this hidden column is a C, that means we know that means, in that case, it's a customer row. It's not an invoice row, okay? So what do we want when that happens? Well, when that happens, I want to run a macro, a macro called show invoices, and we'll go over that in a minute, okay? If it's the minus sign, right? If it's the minus sign and it's also customer, then I want to hide the invoices, okay? If it's a minus sign like this, I want to hide them, okay? Or like this, hide them, okay? So if it's a minus sign and a C, I want to hide, okay? If it's, uh, and then the next two parts of the code are basically saying, if it's a, if it's a minus sign and an, in, and an invoice, I want to hide the payments, okay? So if you look on the code here, the next, the next section is if it's a plus and an I, show the invoices. If it's a minus, uh, this should be hide. Sorry, let me update that. that we're going to be hiding invoice. Let me update. These are comments so you help show you what we're doing. So I want to make sure we accurately. So we're hiding the invoices. And uh, these are payments, not invoices. So let me update that code for you as well so that when you get the workbook, you know everything that's going on here. Okay, so we're hiding. I've also made the macro names very clear too. Show payments, hide payments. Okay, so you've got lots of commenting so you know what's going on. So that's all that there, all that's all the code that runs on this page. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the invoice macros. Okay, and we'll go over this line by line so you know what's going on. But basically here on the invoices, here's the idea. What I want to do is I want to run an advanced filter. And I didn't know what advanced filters were the first few years, and God, thank God I learned it. It's one of the, if you don't know what an advanced filter is, it's one of the best things that you can learn. And I'm going to teach that to you here today. And it's fast. It works with tons of data. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to manipulate. And uh, it's really it's really great thing moving forward you're using all your applications and basically the idea is here is I want to I want to search all of the invoices and I want to search for let's just say we're working on customer four okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that customer number and I want to know all the invoices for this customer okay so in the advanced filter what I've done is saying I want to filter all these but I don't want to filter it in the place I want to filter it here and advanced filter, the ability is here under data, advanced, okay? And we're going to use VBA, but if you were doing it manually, you would use it here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy it to another location, okay? And so first of all, what is the data, okay? Here's the data, the original data, E3 through K, okay? The only difference is in ours, we don't want 48 because we don't know what the last row is in VBA, so we're going to actually use a uh, variable for that, okay? And the criteria means means is here, A1 through AG, okay? So the criteria means what should we filter this by, right? And then copy to range, well, I want to copy the data. Where do I want to copy it? I, want, I don't want to copy it in place, okay? I want to copy it to different locations so that we can work with it once it's in a different location. And you can see here, we filtered this, customer number four, and listed only, you know, oops, let me cancel that out. And we listed only the customers number four. And so that filtered our data. So advanced works really good. We're going to do all of this through VBA, but you can see what's going on here. And we did the exact same thing for payments. If we scroll over, except we used invoice number. So I want to know all of the payments for this specific invoice number. So we ran an advanced filter. 
Now, when running advanced filters, the, there's one very important rule, okay? And that's these headers, names, names must match these headers. If there's a slight difference, it's going to throw an error, okay? So what I'll do is I'll always, you know, copy this, and then I'll paste here, and I'll hold the control, and then I'll paste the values, okay? I want to make 100% sure and uh, that these values are the same as the headers. Those headers values must be the same. That's the really important rule, so you want to take care of that. Okay, so that's what's going on. So basically, the idea is when I want to, I want to know all of the invoices for this customer. I want to know how many, and I want the data. So I want. So when we filter it, we use number four here. And now we know we've got all. This. And so through VBA, we'll do that. All right. So let's go ahead back into the VBA, and I'll show you what's going on here. Under the invoices, uh, we've dimensioned a few variables: customer number and invoice number as string, okay? And uh, the invoice quantity, that's gonna be the number of invoices because we need to count. We need to know how many rows to expand under that, plus one for the header. So that's very important. We need to know how many, okay? We need to know the last invoice row. When we run our advanced filter, we need to know the last row of our invoices, okay? So that's very important. Also, we need to know the active row, and the active row is whatever row we have selected, okay, we need to know what that row is. In this case, it's 13, but we need to, we need to put that into a variable so that we can use that through our code. So we need to know what that active row is, okay. So in our code here, the first thing I've done is um, I've gone with sheet one. Most of our work is going to be here in sheet one, which is customers. So we've, uh, we've used the with and with so that we can no longer need to uh, defer to that sheet or refer to that sheet uh, here. So we've done with sheet one and the active row basically is saying it's the active cell row. You could theoretically use active cell row throughout the code as well, but we've shortened it up just as a variable under active row, okay? First of all, we want to know what the customer number is, okay? So the customer number is E and the active row. That'll get us a customer. Remember, our customer knows is E, right? So if we've selected, if I've selected G, right? If I've selected here, I know the customer number is one, E1, right? Because that's the selected row, okay? So E5 is customer number one. So we know, so we have to get that customer number, which is here. All right. Now, the last invoice row. We need to know what the last invoice row. If we're going to run a filter, right? We're going to go back to the invoices. If we're going to run a filter on all of these invoices, we need to know what what's the last row. In our case, it's 48, okay? But we need to know that through VBA. So, this line of code will tell us the last row of invoices, sheet 2. E999, you can change this number to, I think the maximum is 265,000, I don't know. I don't know what the maximum is, but this covers us, okay? So this is going to tell us the last row of the invoice. This is important because we don't want to run an advanced filter on all of, you know, the, the possible rows. We just want to run it only on the data we have, and that helps speed things up, okay? Next is what I want to do is I want to clear out any possible previous filters, okay? So what I've done here is we're just clearing some contents here. A2 and A4, th A, A4 through AG99. I'll have cleared that and I'll show you what that is. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I want to delete this. I want to clear, I want to clear this, any, any possible customer number before. And I want to clear all of this out. I don't want to get any confused with any possible previous filter. So make sure that before we run a, a new filter, we've clear, cleared all the data out from a previous filter. That's really important. Okay, so that's what this line of does, clears any previous data. Next up, for our advanced filter, we want to put that customer number in AA2, right? We want to put that customer number right here, okay? Because that's going to tell us what to filter the data by. All right, so our next line of code is the advanced filter, okay? An advanced filter is just one line of code. All right, and it's the same thing. Remember, it's this. It's doing the same thing as this data advanced filter. It's doing all of this work. Okay, it's doing that exact same thing except in VBA. So under advanced filter, all right. First of all, we need to know what the data is we're filtering. Okay, and remember, this is all of the invoices, all of the invoices. Okay, so E3 to K and the last invoice row, all of our, all of our, all of our invoices here. 
E3, include the header. Make sure you include the header. E3, 2K, and then whatever the last row is. Okay, so that's the filter that we're going to be working through. Okay, and the criteria means, well, you want to filter it. What is the filtering? Okay, so the criteria is all this, right? And if you wanted a specific customer number and a specific invoice number, you could add theoretically two different criteria shares. We're only using one, but our criteria is here A1, A1 through AG2. That sets our criteria. So that means it knows it's going to filter anything. We've already put the customer number in here, so we're going to know what to filter it by. All right, so the criteria A1 through AG2. And now it says, well, where once this is filtered, where do you want to where do you want to copy this range to? Okay. Well, we want to copy it to AA AA3 to AG3. And all it's saying is we want to copy it right here, including the headers, always including the headers, AA3 through AG. So that's all we're going to be doing. We're copying it there. Okay, and the last one is is unique. Are these records? Do you want just the unique ones? And that is correct, true. So that's what that does. So what that does is it's going to put all that data here. So for example, if we click on customer, right? If we click on customer number two, and now we see three invoices. Let's go back. Okay, now you see the code ran. Customer two, customer two, right? And it puts all the information. It's, it's it's just amazing once you learn how to do this uh, it, it opened up so many possibilities for me so advanced filters critical so that's all we did now what we need to do is okay we have all of our data but now what I want to what I want to do is I want to basically say I want to get this data here I want the invoice number I want the invoice date the mouse I want to put that all I want to put it right here okay okay I want to put that right there so I want to put these three information and I want to stick it right here right here okay that's what I want to do so what we have to do is we need to know first of all we need to know how many rows of data how, how many uh, how many filters so we need the last filter row okay what we need to know is what's the last row in our case this last row is six right so we need to find out well, because we need to know how much data to transfer over. We know the starting row is four, right? But we don't know the end row, or VBA doesn't know. So the last row is simply sheet two AA. We're going to use this column A, AA. Okay. Just make sure you use columns that always have data in there. AA, and then it'll give us the last row. So this tells us the last filter row. And in the, if there's a case where uh, the last filter row is less than four that means we have no invoices okay so what it's gonna do is, is we said okay if there's no invoices we're gonna skip all the way down here and we're gonna put a little message box saying there's no invoices for this customer okay so what we do is the normal normally we're gonna exit sub but this tells us to message to give the user a message box saying there's no invoices we don't want to run through all this if there's no invoices so what we this tells us to skip all the other stuff okay so we know the last filter row in this case is six okay so the invoice quantity the number of invoices equals the last filter row minus three okay so if this is six minus three that means we have three invoices three invoices. so we know we have the invoice quantities three okay now the next line the active cell we need to change it to a negative that means back in the customer sheet we need to change this value here if I click on it, it's gonna go back to a plus just to the right we need to change it from a plus to a minus because it's now expanded okay so that's all that line of code does it just changes it to a minus okay now what we need to do is we need to insert the number of rows basically what we want to do is we want to enter the number of invoices plus one extra one for the header okay we want to enter the header first so we know what it is so all it's saying is the invoice quantity plus one insert down that's what this line does inserts the number of rows and I'll just put inserts number of rows plus one for a header okay and uh, so that's what this does now the next is we need to get the header in here all right but but uh, we don't have the header right well, where's the header what I've done is I've just put in some simple labels on the right if you'll see here's our invoice header all I've done is taken this information just put it here and you'll want to hide this right in your own thing 
in your own workbook, you'll hide it. Okay, put it somewhere where you know anywhere. The, oh, my suggestion is don't put it low. If you put it down here and you're inserting the rows, if you put it down here and you start inserting rows, it's not going to be row you know 11 or 12 because as you insert rows, so make sure you put it above row five or put it on another sheet is even better okay you can put it on another sheet that's okay just make sure it's on row five or above because as we expand these rows the row numbers change and we need to know what row these headers are on okay all right so make sure you didn't do that I did it <laughs> yep that's how I learned so uh, you will want to uh, go to where were we Oh, so we insert the header. So all we're doing is saying the H in the active row plus one, right? Active row plus one. That's the row we want to enter the header. And where's the header? It's U3 through Z3. Okay, our header's on U3 through Z3. Okay, so all we're doing is copying those values. Remember, we don't want to copy the formats. The formatting is already taken care of through our conditional formatting. So all we're doing is pasting the values. As soon as the values get placed, and as soon as we place that I for invoice, right? And as soon as we, we place uh, that, it's going to take care of itself. So we don't have to worry about that. And as you can see, I've included the header item IH, right? That's, that's going to help us determine. I've included those headers here. So when we paste it in, automatically it's pasted here. And then our conditional format is going to be automatic. All right, and next up on the line of code, we have uh, the ability, we wanted to, uh, so we're going to add in the header, and once we add in the header, uh, it's ne not necessarily going to be justified, right? It's uh, going to be based on justified these. So what we want to do is I wanted to center, I wanted to make sure this header was in the center, so I added a line of code uh, that says this will justify. Uh, I just take that one single header row and I give it a horizontal alignment of center. Okay, so that's what that line of code. It just centers the header, centers all the text in the header. The next line of code is uh, let's go ahead and add in some notes on that. Add invoices. Okay, so the next line of code is going to say H in the active row plus two, right? Okay, so that's H here. Right, and the active row. Remember, active row is still that first row plus two. So we're starting at the second row plus all of the. What I want to do is I want to add in all. So it's going to start here, right? Start here. Start plus two, all the way to L in the active row plus one plus the invoice quantity. Okay. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm defining this range right here. Okay. I'm defining this specific range. And I'm saying in this range, something, right? And what is that something? Well, in that particular range, I want that to equal sheet two, AC4, and do this. So let's go over that sheet two, AC4, okay? Starting at invoice, AC4. And where do I want it to go? I want it to go all the way to AG and the last row. And we've defined that last row, right? So A, C to A, G in the last filter row. So basically I'm saying put this data, right, place it right here. Okay, that's all I'm saying. With that one line of code, place this data here. We haven't quite entered this yet, okay, you, uh, but we'll do that in the next row. Now we need to know what, what types of these. We know that these are invoices, right? These are important for coloring. If we take one of these out, right, you see, it's going to, right, you see how the colors are dependent on that? You see that? So those eyes are important. That helps us. That helps us tell us what color, you know, what colors should go there. So it's very important. That's how we've used to color code it. So we're saying the next row is M, right? Basically that same range M from the active row all the way to M. Just add an I in there. So basically all I've said is M through this make those I, okay? So that we can properly color those cells and properly label them. Next up. We want to um, let's see mark line as invoice. Okay, so the next up on the G right and the active row, we want to make it here. So we've done that. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, we want to add the pluses here because we want to be able to expand these. So G right, we want to add this. So that way we can expand it. 
right? So all, all I've done is adding the, the plus sign, which will tell us tell the user that they can expand that. So mark line as invoice. We'll put this to expand. Expand payments. A little bit more clear. Payments. Okay, four payments. And so you can expand that. Uh, and the next item is, well, next, um, we also have to format these cells. As you can see, the main table formatted is basically text, you know, general formats. But, um, and this is, an, is a dollar amount, right? So if we don't format, these are going to be dollar amounts, right? If I do, let's go, let me show you without that line of code, okay? Let me, let's comment this item out, okay? And comment this item out, okay? So let's take a look at what this looks like when we when we add a row okay look the invoice is a dollar amount which we don't want okay this this looks okay but you know it's it, it's not always I think before maybe not in all rows because I know some rows it's not necessarily look this one's on the left this one's on the right so it's important to format these properly okay and this definitely is not going to work so we need to know hey this is not a we need to tell Excel this is not a, a, a dollar amount this should be an invoice right or general right we basically says hey this should be not accounting we need a general right so that's what these two lines of code do okay oh I didn't comment that out. That's why I didn't. That's why it was working right. So let me let me do that again. Let me comment this one out just so you can see. All right. So when we expand, right there we go. Now you can see it's that's not right. Okay, it should not be that because that's formatted for phone numbers, right? So it's not going to work. So the idea is we need to just set the these two these two rows set the formats correctly. Okay, set ones for amount and one for invoice number. Invoice is general okay the amounts is zero you can set this to what you can you can change the currency here no problem you know if you like if you don't not using dollars okay so that's the reason why we've used two lines to format this because basically we have a different data type it's the same column but a different data type so we want to make sure we format that accordingly and that's it that is all that is required to to do the expand and now why don't we go ahead and go over what it's taking to basically when I reduce it you know or when I I hide it but these are not hidden rows okay if we were some people say oh well you can use hidden rows but if you have a table of 1000 or 10,000 you, you cannot use hidden rows it's way too much data and it would be way too slow and it's just simply unnecessary when you can use this right this way so hidden rows and I know Excel has the ability to expand right you have the ability to expand and delete, but that's also cumbersome and doesn't look good. Uh, so we can also, I know Excel has grouping where you can use grouping here, but that also is not a good solution. This is a better solution because it's inherently uh, just like a software application, and that's what we were trying to achieve, and this is much more user-friendly. So that's it. So the next up, we have hide invoices, okay? Basically what we want to do is, we don't really want to hide them, but it, we we're gonna actually all we're gonna be doing with the code is deleting these rows, okay? Just deleting those rows only. So uh, to do that, I say, okay, oh, I want to delete these rows, but I only want to delete these rows. How do we know which rows to delete? When we click on here, we, we want them deleted. When we click on here, we want them inserted. Okay, so we want to delete these rows. So that's what this little macro is doing. Once again, we're determining what the active row is. And next, we need to get the last invoice row. Okay, in this code here, what we're doing is we're offsetting, okay, one row down and one row to the left, right? If it was a plus one, it would be one row to the right, okay, one column, excuse me, one column to the left and one row down. So what I want to say is, okay, one, one row down, one column to the left, that's here. If this is the active cell, okay, if this is the active cell, one row down, one column to the left. That's the offset. What I want is I want to know how many rows here. What is the next? I want to know what is the next cell with the value in because that's going to be the limit. Okay. So what this is is going to tell us the last row. Let's just say in this case it is 21, right? So in this case that number is 21, but I don't want 20 because I don't want to delete that. Okay. So I want to delete one less, which is minus one. Okay. So now we're going to say the active row plus one, the active row is still this row, plus one, which is this one, 
all the way to this row minus one, which basically is going to be these rows right here, right? This one, delete those rows. That from this row to this row, delete. So that's how we've defined it, okay? So we're saying uh, this one, we want to change it back to a plus, okay? Change it back to a plus and delete these rows, all right? That's all we're doing here. That's very simple amount of code there. So that's that's how we we uh, delete the rows because uh, it's simple. And if you want to expand again, just do it. It's extremely user friendly. And now with pay payment macros, it's exactly the same thing except with payments. There's no difference. Um, when we're expanding payments, we're doing the same thing, right? We are putting an invoice number in, right? We're getting the invoice, putting the invoice in going through all of the payment data until the last row, okay? We're putting the invoice number here, we're running a filter, okay? We're, we're finding the last row of the filter. We know the first row, we're finding the last row, we're, and we're gonna copy in, we don't need this one, we know what customer, we know what invoice, we don't need the customer name, but we want the payment date, we want the payment amount, and we want the payment type, okay? So we're gonna copy that three, columns of information and we're going to copy it right in here and before we do that we're going to grab our header row from here okay including the uh, little use for conditional formatting the value we use for conditional formatting we're going to paste that right in here and you'll notice there's a row skip there's a row missing column missing that we're not using here as well here as well okay also here so all we have to do is paste this entire thing in paste it right here with the code, grab the, the values from the advanced filter, paste them right here, then we place the P's in there, and then there's no other expand, so there's nothing here. So then all we do is we place the P which stands for payments, and that's going to customize the row. And that's what we've done in this macro here. It's the same thing. We've done all the same thing. We've got the active row, we've determined what invoice number is, we are getting the last row, let me see, this should be payments, okay, the last row of the payments. Then we are clearing any previous filters from the payments. We are taking the invoice number and we're putting it in AB2, that's how we get the filter, all right, we're putting it here, putting the invoice number, that's how we get the filter. We are then running our advanced filter with this line, getting the last row of that filter, Okay, if for some reason there are no payments, we're going to skip all of this. It's saying if the last filter is less than four, if the last filter is less than this, okay, the last row is less than line four, we're going to skip. We don't need that. Okay, we're going to take the active cell value and change it to minus, right? Active cell, we want, we want this change to a minus here. Actually, it would be here, here, right here. We want this change to a minus for payments. And then uh, we're going to shift the entire cells down, right? The number, by the number of payments, the payment quantity, the number of payments, okay? And we're going to add in the payment header. We're justifying it. We're going to add in the payment data with this row, just basically copying over those filters. We're going to mark this line with a P, right? We're going to mark it with a P so that we can properly color it. And then we're going to format, right? Uh, let's take a look. Let's go ahead and paste this. We're going to format. We don't need this row. That was from previous. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We only need to format the amounts because they're all uh, they're all amounts here, right? We only need to format the amounts here. These dates remain the same, so we only need to format J, okay, okay, or K in that case. And uh, actually, it should be J. Let's go ahead and change that to J. J here. J, J here, so J, J to J, it's only one column, so that's correct, okay, J to J, right, only one column, this doesn't need to be formatted, general is fine, and then um, that's it, and then we formatted, there's nothing else to it, and the same thing with the high payments, we've gone ahead and just determined what, what the last row is, and in this case, in this case, we're going to use this column here to determine, let's see, we are going to use active cell, the offset one row down. We can use the existing row. We're not offsetting any column here, okay? One row down to count them. That means we're here. Remember, this is our active cell. 
one column down, we want to count the blanks here. We're counting the blanks until the next plus, right? Because when we want to minimize it, we only want to delete the rows in the middle, nothing else. And what another feature I like is if if uh, we hide this, it's gonna it's gonna hide everything. I love that. And so uh, it's really nice if you've expanded a lot of them, you know, and you want to see all the invoices. You don't need to go uh, hide each one. You can just hide the customer because remember, it's gonna pull all of those. It's gonna delete them all, right? Gonna delete them all because it uses this column, right? So that's unique, and it does that. All right, that's pretty much it. So we've hidden the payments, and I think that is it. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this one. Um, it's really simple once you get the process down, once you get the conditional, the conditional formattings can be a little bit complex, but once you get them down, it's, just, it's really amazing. You can drill down any type of data. It's extremely fast, and I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you have not already, please join our group over at Excel for Freelancers group. And as always, uh, if you like this video, please, please share it. Thank you very much.